In this video, we will learn what is Reynolds Transport Theorem, why we need it, and what are the major applications. Then we will understand the difference between a system and control volume. At the end of this video, we will drive the Reynolds Transport Theorem. The Reynolds Transport Theorem provides us a relationship between the changes in the system properties and the changes in control volume properties. And we use Reynolds transport theorem for derivation of conserv conservation of mass equation, conservation of momentum equation, and conservation of energy equation. These three equations are derived in the form of integrals and these equations are used to solve many fluid flow and heat transfer problems. Before the derivation of Reynolds transport theorem, we must understand the difference between a system and control volume. In the system approach, we follow the fluid as it moves and deforms. You can see the boundaries of a system by these dashed lines. And the boundaries are changing as the fluid is separated from the bottle. But as it is a closed system, no mass can cross the boundary. The system approach is much more difficult to analyze the fluid flow problems. Whereas in the control volume approach, we consider a fixed interior volume. So the volume shown by this dash, dashed line do not change with respect to time, but the mass can cross the control surface and mass can cross its boundaries so it is easy to solve fluid flow and heat transfer problem by using control volume approach so we now uh, will drive the reynolds transport theorem consider the flow through a diverging nozzle as shown in this figure at the initial time t the system and the control volume coincides with each other and they share the same boundaries as highlighted by this yellow borderline at time t plus delta t the fluid uh, moves in the forward direction and by the definition of a system we will follow the fluid. These hatched region uh, show us the system at time t plus delta t. No mass can cross the boundaries of a system and we follow the fluid at time t plus delta t the fluids move in this direction and by the definition of a system we follow the fluid as it moves this hatched region shows us the system at time t plus delta t no mass can cross the boundaries of a system. Whereas control volume um, boundaries remain fixed as shown by the pink dashed line. And uh, mass can cross the boundaries of the control volume surface. So, this uh, 
yellow highlighted region is the inflow during the delta t time so it is taken as negative and this highlighted region is the outflow during delta t time and it is with the positive sign so outflow is positive and inflow is negative in the next step we will subtract the first equation from the second equation and divide it with divide it by delta t and in the next step we will take the limit as delta t approaches to zero and by using the definition of derivative we get the equation in this form so we have this equation where b is the extensive property of a system which can be mass momentum or energy and small b is the property of the system per unit mass and by definition we know that mass flow rate is equal to rho v a area a is area so we can write the above equation in the form of mass flow rate and small v where subscript 1 is for the inlet and subscript 2 is for the outlet so uh, we can write the b dot that is the flux crossing the boundaries of uh, control volume in the integral form this integral is a surface integral where cs stands for control surface rho v delta a is the mass flow rate and b is uh, the property of the system per unit mass in this expression v dot n is the velocity in n direction n direction is the direction normal to the surface we need the velocity component always in the normal direction which is normal to the surface so in the next step we will define the b what is b for control volume b is the extensive property and uh, we have defined that b is equal to here we have defined the b b is equal to small b times m and m is mass which is equal to rho delta v so uh, this term b c v can be written in the form of volume integral and if we differentiate with respect to time and back substitute and back substitute these two values these two values in back into this equation we get we will get the Reynolds transport equation in this form this is obtained after back substituting the equations that in the previous slide so we have got the Reynolds transport theorem in this final form where the first term is the change in the system property with respect to time and the second term is the change of a property b small b within the control volume with respect to time and mass flux crossing the boundaries of that control 
volume. This equation is for a fixed control volume. As we can see, this bottle is not moving, so its control volume is fixed. For a moving control volume, in which the control volume is moving like an moving aeroplane in which the control volume is moving or a moving piston in which the boundaries of the control volume are moving. So in this case we will only replace velocity V here by VR where VR is the relative velocity.